I support Keith Andrew Network. I, I just had an interview with Keith and uh, it was really fun, informative, and I very much enjoyed the show. Highly recommend you watch it. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Keith Andrew Network. I am the one and only Keith Andrew, and you're watching, that's right, said it once, say it again, you're watching the Keith Andrew Network. Today, I have a very special guest. She is well recognized on all social media formats, and you've been on TV, so you're kind of like a TV star. You've been on, stay it right down. You've been on Fox News, NBC, ABC, CBS News, nationally recognized for being a trainer and speaker on emotional intelligence. And my guest today is Val Gray, and I just want to say thank you for um, being a guest with me. Oh, thank you, Keith. Very, very nice to be here. No, the honor is all mine. Don't mind me. I haven't done my interviews as of late, so I brought up a, a kind of hesitation towards it. Long story about that. You know, basically Google took down my YouTube account for absolutely no reason, so I'm fighting with them to get it back. But everyone can see my interviews in the meantime on my fan page on Facebook.com under the fan page called KeithAndrewNetwork.com. Excellent. Oh, that kind of, that's, uh, that's awful that the it took your YouTube down. I, I empathize with you. When that kind of thing happens, it can be very frustrating. It's true. And I've been on there for like almost six, six and a half years. And it's kind of like, and then I found out that um, Google's not run by people. Google's actually run by computers. So it's kind of like Skynet ah. taking over. Yeah, it's a whole... Oh, right. So so there's nobody really for you to talk to then about it. There is, but it, they're just being um, lazy about it. Every time I call them, they're like, oh, it's got to be 15 minutes or it's got to be a half hour. It's got to be an hour. I'm like, why, why is it so hard to have actual people picking up the phone back? Hi, how are you today? What can I help you with? N or, you know what, for a freaking uh, technology deal, and it'd be like, no wonder people are being anti so so. <laughs> I know. I, I'm, I don't even know why I'm laughing because it, when it happens, it's, it's, very, it's very annoying and, uh, and so difficult. When, you know what I find so difficult? When, when technology makes things so fast, and then when it goes wrong, it just slows everything down. It's terrible. That's but anyway. <laughs> Sure, you'll get it sorted. <laughs> Hopefully, knock on wood. But the first thing I want to ask you about is, how did you become nationally recognized? Was there like certain tips that you had to take, or is there any tips that you can give to our listeners and viewers? How does one become nationally recognized? Right. Thank you for that question. It all started with a book. And uh, let me see if I, oh, well, actually, I, I thought I might be able to just hold the book up. But uh, our first book was Super Service. And uh, we wrote that in 1999. It's a while ago now. And uh, we got it published by McGraw-Hill. And how we did that was, there's a book called The Writer's Market. You literally look in this book, it's got publishers in there, it's got telephone numbers. And uh, so my husband and I had an idea to write this book and we, we, we found the number of this uh, editor at McGraw-Hill. We phoned him up and he, it was a miracle really that he answered the phone, I mean, you know. And we pitched him the idea of this uh, book about customer service and he liked it. So, so that was basically it because 
once you write a book and I'm not sure if it works so well with self-published books. I don't know. But certainly if you have a, a publisher like McGraw Hill, then they put you on the circuit. And uh, that, that's how it happened, Keith. Uh, it was all through a book. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, what is your opinion about my talk show? Do you think eventually I will be nationally recognized? Oh, absolutely. I mean... I think it's all about because you. I was looking. You've got over nine hundred followers. I, I think I saw. So, that's uh, great, right there, isn't it? That's a big number, and uh, I think it's a case of persistence. And sometimes I feel in life, you know, we kind of we keep doing it and doing it and doing it, and and we come up against this wall, and there's a point where we think, oh you know, why am I doing this? And I don't feel like I'm getting anywhere. And that is the moment when we just have to keep pushing through. It's like running a marathon, you know, where you, you hit that wall and then you just push through and then uh, wonderful things happen. That's that's what I think. No, absolutely. Now, out of all the shows, you know, Fox News, uh, NBC, ABC, CBS, what was your most favorite show to be on? And what was your very first? Um, the favorite show to be on was, I'm trying to remember his name now. It was an artist. He's called Max. He does these. Uh, anyway, I happened to be in the green room with him. And uh, we just got on really well. So it was almost before the show <laughs> that I enjoyed it, you know, chatting with, uh, with the person in the green room. Um, um, I... I think that that was probably my favorite show. Uh, the first one that I did was here in Chicago and I just felt very nervous and uh, you know, that kind of cotton wool feeling that, that we can get in our mouth where you know, it's not working properly and so nervous and getting the words out. Uh, so the first show I, I didn't enjoy so much. What about, have you ever thought about being, well, he's not around anymore, he's off the air. But have you ever thought about being on um, Bill O'Reilly? Or have you ever thought about being on Bill Maher? Oh, I mean, I would love to. You know, um, my my latest book, it's it's not a business book, so I'm not sure. But it, it's this one. It's called You Married a What? And uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's about my experience of having uh, my son-in-law is a Muslim. And uh, he, he lives in Egypt. And... Uh, he, so he married my daughter, they had a baby, they came to live with us. And, and this book is about my experience of that. And I would love to get on a on a show and, and you know, talk about that. And well, as I'm doing with you, actually, here, here we are. I'm, my dream is already coming true, right? <laughs> well, I'm flattered you think that you hold me at a high standard. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, you know what, life is, uh, for one thing, life is short. And for another thing, it's all about being in the moment. So, I mean, yes, I could right now be in a TV studio and, you know, stars all around. Would I be any happier than here talking with you? I, I don't think so. I think it's uh, about having passion in the moment and being the best that we can be, wh whatever is happening. And uh, I think that's what makes it a, a great life because... If I wait for something, you know, so-called big to happen, you know, who who's going to be in charge of, of, of what I think about that? Well, well, I am. So being in charge of every thought that I have and every moment, I want to make every moment the best, no matter where I am and what I'm doing. But to be honest, uh, in this today's day and age, no one's as big anymore. They now say, it's going to be huge. <laughs> yeah, he, he's another genius if I does another time <laughs> hey can I ask you what's that behind you is that is it looks like a, a boxing weight belt so it's look like a, it looks like a heavyweight championship belt I is it what is it well actually it's a trophy for myself um, make you uh, make a long story about this I'm um, short is about let's see um Thanks to you, we're up to 496. Originally, I did 300. And I wasn't taking people at the word. I was like, 
You know, it's like, for an example, we were doing the interview, but you didn't sign the permission form. It's like right. hearsay. Then people were making idle threats. Yeah, we're going to sue you. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. And I'm like, for what? We had a great conversation, and now you're backing out of it. And it's like, yeah, you know, my agent said, my publicist said, you're degraded. We don't want to be seen with people like you. You're not worth my time. You're hurting my career. I oh, wow. Oh. I thought, you know, doing charity work with people like you would make me more into a better spotlight, but I we don't care for what you're doing or something, but whatever BS excuse you want to think of. So I went to Winston We Call it Uncensored, and I got up to 300, and people are making, you know, real threats here and there. So I said, screw it. I took everything down, and I rebranded myself as the Keith Angie Network. And I give you an example. When you watch season one, what you see on the camera screen that reflects it, it's basically what the camera picked up. And then season two, it's like, okay, here's the camera, and I'm recording from the computer screen. And then season three and four, I think it was my brother or someone else said to me, why don't you use um, Skype recorder? As we know, Skype is freezing, so we now have FaceTime recorder. So it's got to be cut in half. I'm on the right, you're on the left, or we can flip it around, whatever. And so you see from 2013 all the way up to 18, a big uh, transition. And I could have gave up on this when I had to do it over from scratch. But I want to do this until I die. I'm not oh. saying that to be cute. I'm not saying that to be funny. I'm very passionate about my talk show. And I want to die doing what I love. And like you said, we only went once. And so I got this <clears throat> for myself as a trophy. You know, my brother makes fun of me because trophies are not given to yourselves. They're given as a reward. You don't give yourself a trophy. So a book we were joking about is like trophy for me. <laughs> so, anyway, so basically on here... It's a uh, logo of my company, and I actually custom made the side of the belts. Originally, I wanted an American flag, but I think that was too, I don't know, preachy. So I wanted something custom made, and I'm like, oh, my logo looks really nice. And I made a mistake on um, Tiny Party. The belts banged up because, you know, I told them I wanted this glass, not plaster. So occasionally it starts peeling it. So I had the idea of gluing it. Unfortunately, when the glue smeared, I went to wipe it and it has that little smear mark. Oh, right. So I call it my imperfect belt. But, you know, I could have just gave up when I said, um, you know, hey, we did 300. I don't want to do it anymore. But I did 300 more, so if realistically, I did over 600. Plus, right. I did phone interviews before that, and I did 72 of those. So it's something like 672 or 700. But the point is, if Hank Steel were back up to 496, and what this belt symbolizes, and I didn't see my cast rates in the beginning, but I say it right now. Basically, the whole point of my talk show is to show people that even with having a warning disability, I can step out to something. And at the same time, I'm able to turn myself into an example for people out there dealing with any types of warning disabilities and disabilities to never give up and prove people wrong. Prove to them that labels do not dictate who you are and who you're going to be. And it's prove to them you can step out to something. And I got myself a trophy, you know, you know, trophy for me. But I'm turning it into an example saying, hey, if a kid who's mentally disturbed, uh, retarded, who reads and learns at a fifth grade level can create his own talk show and get over 496 official interviews, then you have no excuse out there to say, I can't do anything. So right. I'm turning myself into an example. If he can do it, I can do it too. 
Absolutely. I love that. That is a, that's amazing. And, you know, I think uh, oftentimes the most critical person for us is ourselves. So I think that's great that you actually made a trophy for yourself. It shows a huge amount of uh, determination and, and passion. And I love the fact that you're going to do this till you die. I, you know, what greater thing to do than, uh, than do the, the thing that you love to do, your passion. It's great. No, absolutely. You know, there's, let's say, you know, unofficially, you know, I did 300, then I did 300 more, so that's six, then I got to four, so that's, <laughs> still pisses me off because I said I did the permission forms a long time ago. But that's right. Sorry. So unofficially, I'm looking at 770 two interviews wow. unofficially but i'm trying to forget thank you for bringing it up <laughs> but i'm trying to forget about that but um yeah officially not gonna what it's 496 and yes. i don't know it's it's kind of like you know people are saying to me you're doing this great thing and i would like to be a part of it let's do the interview and all of a sudden a little birdie gets in your ear and they're like, yeah, I, actually, I changed my mind, but I don't want nothing to deal with you. I don't want nothing to do with the show. I'm like, when oh. did we do the sh interview in the first place? I, oh, well, well I, I thought you were kidding, you know. I thought it was a joke. Oh, I'm uh. glad you think I'm a joke. <laughs> uh, that's why yeah. people are stupid and selfish. Yeah, sometimes they are. But, you know, I, uh, I think... I don't really want to look at people about what they think about us or you or me because, you know, they have their own thoughts. I'm not going to change people's minds, really. And so uh, I just think it's important to, to like you're doing, you know, you're keeping on going and uh, kind of ignoring those those people that are, are not worth listening to. Yeah, absolutely. Now we're going to take a quick commercial break. And when we come back, I'm going to ask you two hard-hitting subjects, and I'm going to pass the show over to you. Okay. Very. Arlene Schofield. My name is Shireen Snow. My name is Carla A. Miles. Diana Camuto. This is Christine Dunford. And me, Eden. Charlie Macy. This is Walker Fannin. Buddy, I'm Camille Dixon. I'm a Saturday Dates for them. My name is Linda Preston, and you're watching the Keith Andrew Network. Me, Mark Medley. Hi, everybody. This is Mark Neely. Barry Papik. This is Peter Bruno. My name is Kyle Collier. This is Julio Santiago, uh, better known as Dynamite. I'm Richard Epcar. This is Kerry and Mayhan. And this is Goldner. And we both support Keith Andrew. And my name is Ron Wasserman, and I am supporting Keith Andrew and what he is doing. And you better do the same, or I'm going to come kick your ass. Ladies and gentlemen, I am your host, Keith Andrew, and welcome back to the Keith Andrew Network. This is 496. I'm here with Val Gway, as you probably know her, and well-recognized Val Gway. You have seen her on Fox News, NBC, ABC, CBS, and the West to West, a couple minutes left. I will pass the show over to you, but first, two subjects I'm going to talk to you about. You wrote a book... That I think you you wrote a book. I saw this on your um, LinkedIn. You're a trainer and speaker. That's the first thing I want to talk to you about. And also, you wrote emotional intelligence. I didn't. I did not write a book about emotional intelligence, but that's something that I teach. It's one of the workshops that I do. is called emotional intelligence. Yes. Now, with that being said, what can you tell us about those two? Right. Well, um, about seven years ago, I was asked to go around the United States uh, at the VA hospitals, you know, teaching workshops to uh, veterans, nurses, doctors, admin people. And one of the things that we did was called emotional intelligence. And really uh, what they've found, what people have found is that we not everybody is born with emotional intelligence, but it's something that can be learned. And uh, there is this method, it's called the ABC theory. 
And what it is, is A is stands for the activating event. So it, it's the event that happens, you know, like, for example, let's take your event, Google shut you down. That's an event that happens. And then the B is your belief about it. So I'm sure you believe like, what the heck, you know, what's going on with this? I haven't done anything wrong. They've shut me down, you know, so you're frustrated and angry. And then C is the consequence. Uh, so, you know, somebody comes to see you that day and you're kind of like, oh, God, you know, it's terrible. You're just not feeling good. And so, so you kind of pass that along. So what we talk about in emotional intelligence is the D and E. So we've got the ABC, activating belief consequence. The D is we dispute our belief. So uh, you get shut down by Google and you, you dispute it and you say, you know what? Okay, they're going through some different things. Uh, this happens to a lot of people. It doesn't mean anything about me. It's not reflecting on me. Uh, it's just something that's happened and I'm going to deal with it. And then the, um, the E, the effect of that is that, you know, you're not as frustrated. You're not as angry. You just can deal with it now. So that's really what emotional intelligence is about, because we all have these events in our life. You know, things happen. It could even be waking up in the morning and you wake up, and you feel a bit depressed. You know, that's an activating event. You feel depressed. You know, you, you don't get your morning coffee. You're kind of a bit pissed off. You know? <laughs> and then the next person that comes to you, you kind of give it to them. You know, yeah, yeah. so emotional intelligence, again, is, is about um thinking a better feeling thought, you know, and have you, you, you probably have heard of Tony Robbins, right? Yes. Yeah. He's very much into NLP, neuro linguistic programming. And I, I was listening to him the other day and he said this great thing. Um, if you stand up and you look up at the ceiling and you slap a big grin on your face, you know, you smile, you're standing up, you're looking at the ceiling, you're smiling. And he said, try and think of a depressing thought. It's, it's actually, you can't do it. So our body, the way that we are, really dictates a lot of, of how we think. And when we keep thinking in a certain way, it creates these beliefs. So you've heard about people when they say, you know, I'm not a morning person. And in my workshops, I always say to them, you know, so let me ask you then. So you start work at nine o'clock in the morning here at the VA and they're like, yeah. And I say, so if you're not a morning person, when do you actually start work? You know, when do you, <laughs> and it's like, because if you're not a morning person, well, do you start work at 10 o'clock at 11 o'clock? Some people, they live their lives like nobody can even say hello to them before they've had a cup of coffee or it's 10 o'clock in the morning. And I just don't buy into that. I think that we potentially are whatever we want to be. And it all begins with a thought and we can change our thoughts. I think that's the biggest thing, Keith, about emotional intelligence. And I'm sorry, I, I kind of went on a little bit long there on a, on a thing, but I, I do believe we, I kind of think thoughts are a little bit like thought bombs. You know, they, they're kind of all out there and they, you know, boom, we get a thought in our head. And, and if we follow a negative, depressing thought, then of course we end up depressed. But if we're aware of like, you know what, I don't have to think about this. I, this is just a thought. It's not even what I believe really. And I think something that makes me feel better. Now I'm on a different path. My brain is going down a whole different pathway and the result is you feel better i mean i have been depressed in my life you know i've i've gone through times where i just i didn't want to get out of bed and you know everybody suffers and the person that suffers most is myself and so with emotional intelligence i was just so very happy to teach oh is that your dog yeah <laughs> what's your dog called Oh, it's, she's, um, I almost forgot for a minute. Uh, her name is Fifi, and she's a uh, toy poodle. Oh, lovely. <laughs> Fifi the toy poodle. Wonderful. Um, yes, yeah, so, so you know, I, I was just so happy to know that, um, you know, here's another thing. I mean, the brain, 
you know, when we think certain things, it kind of creates this neuro linguistic pathway and we can change it. So I change from being a depressed person to a, a morning person, bright, happy. Now, do I still get depressed sometimes? Yes. I mean, we're a human being and, you know, life can be a struggle. It can be difficult, as you know, with your Google, you know, like, why, why did that happen? But the great thing is, is we can change our thoughts. And uh, as you start believing, you know what, I, I'll get on my YouTube, it'll get sorted, I'll find someone that can help me, it will happen. That's true. And now my other subject for you, yeah. that I'm going to pass the show over to you, it's how do you feel about social media? With everything you accomplished, just being on hit TV shows, you know, like I mentioned, of all hit networks like Fox, ABC, CBS, how do you feel about social media? Do you think it dictates your career or do you think it can make you or break you? Wow, that's a, that's a big one, Keith. Um, great question. I am actually 68 years old. I know I don't look it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but I'm a bit of an antique, as you can tell. So social media is something which I've really had to learn. Now, my grandson, my grandkids, uh, they were born with it. So they know it. I do not know it so well. So for me, it's always a learning curve. I, and um, so, you know, Snapchat, I'll get on it, but I don't really use it as well as my grandkids use it. Um, LinkedIn, I use it. I have to force myself. And as a matter of fact, that's how we got to know each other. So I, I think it's great. I think uh, there's a huge potential. I mean, to to be talking like this, when I first came to America in 1983 from the UK, it cost a fortune to even use the phone, you know, and I couldn't even see my my family. Now, here we are, we're, you know, we're FaceTiming and uh, we could have Skyped if I got my act together a little bit more. And I, I don't know what happened, my end, techn the technical. Don't worry about it. Yeah. But um, so I think it's a great thing. Um, I wish I could use it more than I do. Like I said, I'm I'm not uh, I'm not as up to things as as I could be as younger people are. But then again, um, it's just a learning curve. So I keep learning. I keep um, you know doing it. Uh, blogging, the YouTube I think is fabulous. I mean, so many people putting things out. You yourself putting your radio show out. Um, now there's a lot of competition also on it, but then again, there's a lot of competition anyway. I mean, when I wrote my first book, Super Service, one of the things I had to do in the book proposal was to write out who, who is my competitor. If there is no competitor, then there's no reason for the book. The reason that we have competition is because people want it. So we just have to, like you are, you know, you're, you're doing all of these shows, you just keep at it, you, you keep doing it because you love it. I think when we have passion about something, um, it keeps firing us up till the day that we die. And, and what a great life doing something that we like. So social media, I think it's great. And um, I think we just have to uh, keep learning. It changes a lot. And, uh, but it's, it's a wonderful thing. No, absolutely. Now it's the last five minutes. I'm going to pass the show over to you. Was there anything you wanted to talk about? Anything you wanted to promote? This is your time. Okay. Well, you know what? I will promote this book, uh, You Married a What? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> by Val G. Um, so You Married a What? It's a funny book. It is, um, again, it's about my own, it's a memoir. Uh, it's my own experience of, um, of, of living with a not living with a muslim but my my son-in-law is a muslim and i've learned so much um about this different religion this different culture that so many people are kind of scared of or they don't really know you know what's going on and uh, i've been able to you know talk to him find out and what i've realized keith is we're all the same underneath we all want to love be loved we want to be accepted uh, we want to be respected, uh, we want to be listened to, 
and so it doesn't really that, that i guess that's the message you know it is um whatever we have in life you know whatever life gives us disabilities of different kinds um we just have to respect each other listen to each other communicate uh smile we have no idea you know what a smile can do to someone uh because we all go through those times of being depressed and upset and you know what's it all about <laughs> that's true and uh, actually have you ever thought about doing a audio book you know I did with this and um the audio I Deefy, what are you doing yes it's really noisy <laughs> Uh, yes, yeah, so I, I have done that. I just need to get it out as, as well. So, yeah. Well, I do have a couple of questions for you off the air. But wrapping up our interview segment, how can people follow you on social media? Are you on Twitter, Instagram? Uh, yes, it's uh, Val G, V A L G E E. Um, I've got some YouTube channels out there and uh, LinkedIn. I think my Twitter is Valgy at Valgy dot com, and so here, here we go, Keith. Now you can see I should have this all written down, and it should come tripping off my tongue, and it doesn't. So that's something I need to learn, right? <laughs> well, I tried finding you on Twitter, but there's so many people with the same name. But um, if you can add me, I appreciate it. Well, you know, if they go to Amazon.com, this is where they can get this book and they'll kind of learn about me there. Um, so that will probably be the best thing. All right. I do have a couple of questions for you off the air about wrapping up our interview segment. When I first approached you to be a guest on my talk show, what was your first reaction and what made you say yes? Oh, my first reaction was was yes and what made me say yes was there you were on LinkedIn I saw you had you know hundreds of followers and uh, you were in the military and I thought yeah I, you know I taught at the VA so there was a kind of like all right yeah I, I'll be a guest here this will be fun and it has been fun thank you so much for uh, inviting me I really appreciate it I do want to clear up uh, one thing you said um, I was part of what uh that you were, weren't you in the military? No, I went to West Point and I uh, was trained to be a custodian. But no, I never was in the army. Oh, okay. Well, West Point, That in my mind, it's kind of like somewhat similar. I don't know. Probably veterans are like, no, it's not at all similar. But, you know, what can I say? I'm an old English woman and uh, I, do, <laughs> I do my best. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Now, I appreciate it. Now, stay tuned for Off the Air to have a couple questions about wrapping up our interview segment. It was a real honor and privilege having you as a guest, and I'm looking forward to part two down the road. Excellent. Thank you, Keith.